and welcome to this edition of For the Quantum Grammar Shoot Podcast, the only podcast of its kind on the internet. I'm your host, Colin Jason Knife and Matthew Colin Glass. You may call me Jason. And in this podcast, which is a podcast of opinion, I take a look at certain topics through the lens of the technology known as correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar, i.e. the grammar technology brought to the public by colon David Ivan Wim colon Miller. And in this uh, edition, I'm going to be talking about YouTube. And I'm going to be talking about something that just happened, which I feel is pretty significant and interesting in and of itself. And I'm going to give you some background on that. So the topic is YouTube and how YouTube treats its uh, channels, what it does and what it doesn't do. Now, the significant event I'm talking about is that an individual known as colon mark hyphen lowercase k, Kishon Christopher, Kishon colon Christopher, sorry about that, has either had his channel deleted or he himself deleted the channel so either youtube deleted his channel or he deleted his channel now i don't know what's going on there i don't follow the guy i do watch his videos when people send them to me or when it pops up in my suggested videos i'll sometimes click on them just to see what he's up to but I don't subscribe. I hadn't subscribed to his channel in a long time because I just kind of view what he does as complete fiction. Uh, you know, my evidence for that is a complete lack of correct grammar teaching in any of his videos. However, I saw today that his channel no longer exists. So I thought, hmm, that's very interesting. So I know that he has a website, so I went on to his website, and I went to his blog section, and I noticed, you know, his blog section was made up of his YouTube videos. And when I saw the list of all the videos on the blog, they were all unavailable. And it said that this channel has been deleted or no longer exists. So I thought, wow, that's really interesting that his website now has a completely empty blog section. All the videos are unavailable. And then I see that he has a Rumble channel. So that must mean he moved to Rumble. The point of this vid- of this uh, podcast is examining YouTube and why someone would either have their video or their channel removed or whether they themselves would remove their channel. No, I don't know what Mark did. I don't know if he's claiming he removed the channel, or if he's claiming YouTube blocked him somehow and deleted his channel. I don't know. Uh, You know, straightforward, I wouldn't believe a word to come out of the guy's mouth. As uh, Colin David Eiffel and Wynn Colin Miller once said, how can you tell a judge is lying when their lips are moving? So I'll leave that there. So let's get into this. Let, let, let's look at this, uh, this situation here. So what I'm going to do now is give you some background on it. As I've shared with you in the past, and this is no secret, I took Mark's classes, his 12-week course, back in 2017 and also in 2018. And he suggested to me and to a lot of other people in the class, to start a YouTube channel, to get this information out there that he was teaching, to start your own channel, because he said YouTube wants to promote quality content. Meaning, it doesn't want fluff. It will help promote quality content with the algorithms. In other words, long story short, He had nothing negative to say about YouTube. He was just saying that 
if you're creating good quality content, you're not slandering anybody, you're not lying, you're not creating made up goofy stories, YouTube algorithm will eventually catch up with you and help promote your videos. I myself have found this to be true. It's been a slow growth for my YouTube channel, but I can say that YouTube has never, ever once given me a problem with any of my grammar videos, ever. The only time I've ever gotten anything, any kind of problem about a video is if I used someone else's music that I didn't know was copyrighted. In which case, I quickly ironed out the problem. I quickly solved it. Either removed the song or contacted the owner and got permission or whatever it was. I stopped and corrected. But YouTube has never, ever tried to block any of my videos or anything like that. Recently, when I began doing a show called For the Now Space News, which <laughs> often imitated but never replicated, um, the original syntax news show YouTube began giving me a yellow dollar sign rather than a green dollar sign for those of you who are content creators on YouTube you know that the green dollar sign means that the video is being monetized if you see the yellow dollar sign then that means it's limited now why would a video have limited monetization well the reason is because YouTube has certain terms and conditions for advertisers to run their ads on your video. If the advertiser feels that your video material is not suitable to run their ads on, they won't do it. And you won't be able to monetize the video. Some of those uh, subjects or you know types of content have to do with certain things that are going on in the world right now. Uh, certain wars, terrorism, certain uh, alleged illnesses, um, and also certain ways of dying that include an individual causing themselves to become, as they say, unalive. There's certain trigger words in there that they won't advertise over. And YouTube will actually may censor those types of words too on top of that. So when I do this Now Space News thing, that's all that's in the headlines. So I can't help but mention those things. So every time I publish in Now Space News, I get the yellow dollar sign saying that they don't think, the advertisers don't, YouTube's algorithms don't think that my video is suitable for advertisers. In which case, I always submit the video for manual review, which means a real human being must watch my video and agree, yeah, it is suitable for advertising, or no, it's not suitable for advertising. See, my point is, yes, I do mention these trigger words and trigger subjects in the videos, but what I'm doing has nothing really to do with the uh, event or issue itself, it has to do with grammar. It has to do with me syntaxing it and also me giving educational and entertaining different types of opinions on the topic, but not really choosing a side or promulgating any type of uh, uh, stance on it. And every time, ladies and gentlemen, every single time YouTube has approved the video after manual review saying, yes, you're right, it's suitable for advertisers. Every time. I've never uh, failed in that aspect. So again, YouTube has never hindered me, blocked me, shadow banned me, nothing like that. Because I keep it about the grammar. Now remember, what did I, what did I say a few minutes ago, I said, Mark, lowercase k, Kishon Christopher, told me back in 2017, 2018, that YouTube wants to promote quality content. It wants good stuff for people 
to watch. And he said, once you start going outside that, that's when you'll start getting strikes. That's when you'll start having problems with YouTube. When you start going into the BS part of it. He didn't say that. That's a paraphrase. Which brings me to his uh, channel being removed. Whether or not he removed the channel or YouTube removed the channel remains to be seen. And again, as I mentioned earlier, even if he said he took the channel down, I don't know if I'd believe him or not. Or if he said that YouTube took it down, I don't know if I'd believe him or not. Um, so I'm going to look at a few things. As I said, you know, it's be hard pressed to find any type of factual grammatical data in any of Mark's videos, which are all gone now anyway, so you can't really <laughs> search those things out to find out if what I'm saying is true or not. There's no way to really certify it. Unless perhaps he's reposted those things over on Rumble, then maybe you can go over there and look at them. But again, I highly doubt you're going to find any correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, knowledge on that channel. Because it's just not what he does. I'm going to give you my opinion on what I think happened. Whether it's true or not, I don't know. I'm just uh, guessing, because as I said at the beginning of the podcast, this is a podcast of opinion. And uh, it's just me guessing. If you look at all the videos that he had published on his channel from day one until now, again, not really any grammar information other than parse, but he does do a lot of speculation um, he does mention a lot of things that cannot be proven or certified. Like, for example, when he would go into in-depth analysis of uh, songs and videos and movies and say that, oh, this is uh, predicting this, or this is the elite telling us that, telling us who the titans are or who God is or who the gods are. Or what, what's happening with the, uh, you know, certain current events as depicted through movies and songs and videos. And, but none of this stuff can ever really be certified. And it's mostly just people taking his word for it without any proof. Um, I know that there's been a lot of predictions that he, he's made that have n never come true. I know because I was following him for a while until I began seeing his track record was horrendous. Just to see, you know, well, does he know what he's talking about or is he just, you know, just uh, making a buck? So I think I, I for sure got my answer on that one. So going by what he said at the beginning when I told you he shared with me and his other students that YouTube promotes quality content, that it, it basically will help quality content get out there. My channel has grown very slowly over the years, but it has grown. I'm well over 5,000 subscribers now. When you look up correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar on Google, you will see my videos. If you do a search on YouTube, you will see my videos. There is no shadow, shadow banning or blocking or anything like that. It's all there. Because I feel that YouTube feels it's quality content. The algorithms work. And Mark, <laughs> with his channel, I mean, with my, again... This is a podcast of opinion, with my opinion, was sort of going off the deep end. Sort of going off on making psychological assessments of people, myself included. He did uh, do what I consider slander on me. Even though he's not a psychologist, I don't think he has a degree in psychology or anything like that. Uh, but he felt the need to, to psychologically evaluate me on his YouTube channel. And, and I'm not special by any stretch of the imagination, he did the same thing with other people as well. Matter of fact, anybody who criticized him 
he would come out and slander them, just like Russell J. Gould does. Um, and so he'll come out and, and slander them. Now, I guess I have to put myself in, in this mix here. If someone criticizes me, I don't slander them. What I do is I look at their grammar. And I do it publicly. I say, do they have a position with which to criticize me? And then I'll put them into the forensics. What I will also do is offer them a platform to show me where I'm wrong, how I'm wrong, and how to correct it. But of course, no one has ever taken me up on that. Ever. Never in five years. To simplify it, I offer a geometric level playing field for the critic to step upon to share their closures on why they think I'm not correct. And no one has ever stepped up on there with me. No one. It's up to this point. So back to the slander and criticism that Mark was putting out there. He's putting out a lot of that. Not only that, but he was starting to make claims about different uh, political figures, I think, or political parties or world, uh, in the fiction realm, of course, um, leaders and things like that, and making some very interesting claims. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I really don't see any way that anyone can certify any of the claims he's making. He has provided certain documents in the past with Queen Elizabeth's signature on them, so on and so forth, but that really doesn't uh, back up any of what he was beginning to claim towards the end of his YouTube channel. Basically using words, like I remember one term that he used which really caught my ear was final solution with regards to the world governments and and what he called, you know, oppressors or interlopers, final solution. Now, where have you heard that term before? Last time I heard that term was in Nazi Germany. Okay? Now, whatever you think about Nazi Germany or what happened in World War II, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the term final solution in the context of World War II, who used it and what it re referred to. It's not a good thing. It's not a positive thing for anyone. Okay? Because think about this, ladies and gentlemen, for a minute. Think about this. How many of you have families who have uh, relatives, family members, cousins, uncles, whatever, who are involved in politics, who are involved in perhaps as being police officers or in the military or, or anything like that, work for the federal government or work in a federal government office as a civilian, whatever. How many of you have relatives like that? How would you feel about that word final solution being applied to them across the board as a blanket statement as Mark was using it towards the end of his YouTube tenure? You see what I'm going with this? So... I have a feeling YouTube probably gave him some strikes for some of the BS he was posting. He saw it coming, so he began scrambling, or actually he probably saw it coming way before that, because he's, you know, he's, he's not stupid, and began creating this Rumble channel well before his YouTube channel was taken down. So that he can make the transition. I'll also bet that he lost thousands of subscribers in doing so. Because that's usually what happens, unfortunately, when people go from platform to platform. I've tried to go on to different platforms and I cannot ever seem to get my YouTube subscribers to go over to a different platform. It just doesn't happen. Um, so, I'll bet that happened to him, and I'll bet that he knew his channel was going to be taken down, 
So either he took it down ahead of time or they took it down. But I find it interesting that any YouTuber that has the amount of content that he had on their YouTube channel would just wipe their YouTube channel off the face of the earth. I mean, why wouldn't you just leave it up? So that leads me to believe that it wasn't a choice on his part. That leads me to believe that YouTube was like, all right, enough of this tomfoolery goofiness. We're getting this lowercase k guy out of here. And that was that. (laughs) One other thing I'd like to share about YouTube is that because of all of those scenarios that I told you about with For the Now Space News uh, show that I do, where all the videos would come under review and then I I would request a manual review, and then in the end, they would always agree with me and green light it for monetization. Uh, because of that, because of the, new, the multiple times I've done that, YouTube sent me an email saying that, you know, with a few more uh, videos, I will be able to self-certify my own videos, meaning they will, not, they will stop subjecting my videos to their advertising algorithm And they will trust my word that the video is suitable for advertisers. Meaning, YouTube is going to stop vetting my videos. Because they trust me that I'm telling the truth when I say my videos are causing no harm and are suitable for all advertisers. I.e. suitable for all viewers. Because I play by the rules of the platform. That I'm a guest of. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, I am a guest of YouTube. Just like if you are a guest in my house or I'm a guest in your house, we have to comply with those terms and conditions of the house with which we are in. And it's the same thing with YouTube. I mean, it's not like I'm paying a yearly fee or anything like that to use the platform. No, it's a symbiotic relationship. Okay? And so, for some reason, they see benefit in me being here on YouTube, putting out videos and saying what I'm saying. They see it. And so, therefore, they're putting more trust in me, which any of those individuals out there who have contracted with me know that I place great value in a trust count. And so, YouTube and I have a trust count. And I've been banking trust in that count over the past few months, and YouTube is recognizing that. So now we come to uh, the other side of the coin, which is the same coin, with my opinion. You have one side of the coin, which is Mark Sean Christopher, and then you have the other side of the coin, which is Russell J. Gould. Now, I know that Russell has his own YouTube channel, but then there's also the War Castles channel, which has had many problems, many, many, many problems with YouTube in the past. I've seen them upload videos and then all of a sudden take them down and then say that, oh, YouTube is, is, you know, blocking this video and blah, blah, blah. Well, folks, I'd have to say the reason is that they're putting stuff out there that cannot be certified, cannot be proven, is not proven. They're just putting stuff out there that could potentially harm certain people because it's either not true or it's just conjecture, conspiratorial uh, drivel, and YouTube is just like, no. No, you can't do that. (laughs) I mean, and in the end, folks, in the end, think about this too. Who controls YouTube? Ultimately, in the end, who is it that owns the channel, runs the channel, pays for it? Okay? If those things are true that the War Castles videos we're talking about that got banned or got taken down or whatever, if those things are true and harmful, why would YouTube and the owners of YouTube want those videos up? That would be like you perhaps 
being a murderer, all right? Say you're a serial killer. And I know you're a serial killer. And I come over to your house, and I come into your house, and I sit down at your table, and I look you dead in your eye, and I say, you're a serial killer. I'm going to tell everybody you're a serial killer. What do you think is going to happen to me? <laughs> I'm not talking about, I'm not, I'm not telling people what to do. I'm not telling people not to go out there and preach their truth. I'm telling people, I'm not telling people, I am highly recommending to people to use logic, use common sense before you get yourself into these situations where you have some content built up on your channel and then all of a sudden it gets wiped away because you get carried away into the conspiratorial part of it. If you can't certify what you're saying, with a continuance of the evidence. If you can't show that what you're saying is true in the video itself, if you're talking about sensitive topics, then I highly recommend not posting it. Because if you can't prove it, then you've totally left yourself open to be a target, to be a victim of the algorithm or whatever it is. Just like when I did the, uh, the mask video over on Coral Blade Grotto last year, I think it was, or maybe the year before, where I talked about how masks are silly, that they don't provide any protection against anything really, um, that the eyes are, uh, you know, very susceptible to things, why don't you wear a blindfold too, and... You know, I just said a bunch of funny stuff, and then YouTube immediately took the video down and, and said that it was medical mis I was spreading medical disinformation. And so I immediately wrote back to them and said, I want to be correct. I don't want to violate your terms and conditions. I want to spread medical information. I want to spread... Uh, knowledge that people can you know learn from and use tell me in the video precisely where i mentioned anything that is not true show me specifically at what marker is their medical disinformation immediately they wrote back and said we're sorry we made a mistake we put your video back up and so they put the video back up immediately so, so, you know, sometimes you got to put forth a little effort. But if you're correct, it's a moot point. I mean, of course, if they really, really wanted to, they could just wipe all my stuff right off the channel. If they wanted to. Just to be, you know, whatever, jerks. They have that option. They don't really need to have a reason because it's their platform. If they don't like me, they can take me off. But I find, more times than not, that they're not really picking on anyone who's actually sharing valuable information. They're not. They're singling out people, with my perception, they're singling out the people in the channels that are spreading BS, that cannot be certified. That is no, there's no continuance of the evidence for what these people are claiming, so therefore they take the channel down. Much like they took down colon Mark hyphen lowercase k, Kishon colon Christopher's channel, and that about wraps up this episode on YouTube. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I'd like to remind you that if you want to become a member of this channel, just uh, go down to the description of this video, click the join button, and there will be two tiers. The first tier is just for people that want to say thanks and support the channel, keep it healthy, keep it afloat. And the other tier is for those who would actually like to contribute to the channel. And by contribute, I mean you actually get to help direct 
the direction of the vessel, what where we're going next, what kind of videos I'm going to make. You get to participate in exclusive polls, and you also get access to some exclusive content not available to the public. Also, if you would like to apply for a correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar workshop, you can email me at the email address at the bottom of your screen there, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com, and I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consult for the establishment of the geometric level playing field of communication. You and I can look each other in the eye, and you can vet me, I can vet you, and we'll see if this is really something that you are motivated and have the gumption and willpower to learn. Thanks, and I'll see you soon.